Hey everyone, today I wanted to share with you a visual that I've been using a lot lately and that visual is called the lollipop chart. Now the lollipop chart is very similar to the bar graph in which you have an axis of categories and an axis of values. Except for instead of bars, you get lollipops. Well, lollipops in the form of visuals. So the question is, between the bar graph and the lollipop chart, what's the difference? So let's dive into Power BI and let's explore when you may want to use a lollipop chart versus a bar graph. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and I'm actually in the Power BI Visual Store because I wanted to download one of these lollipop charts. Actually, the one that I have is this lollipop bar chart by Nova Silva. And this one is a lollipop chart that displays things horizontally, but it looks like they also have a version that has it by columns, just like your traditional bar chart. So this is the one that I have, and so that's the one that I'm gonna be looking at. Okay, so what I've done is I've imported a data set that gives me a series of cars along with their miles per gallon and using that lollipop chart that I downloaded. And immediately the first thing that stood out was the spacing, right? The spacing between the bars or between the lollipops. When you're working with a lot of categories or right, a lot of data, sometimes the spacing can be really difficult to, to see between the bars. And so with the lollipop chart, it was, it was pretty quick. It was pretty quick to see where one bar starts and the other bar ends. Uh, you can still see that with the bar graph, but that you can see that there's not as much room for spacing here or for clarity. So I really liked the spacing of the lollipop chart. Now, the next thing that I noticed is the color. So with the bar graph, while you get a solid color, you also get a solid color from uh, this lollipop stick here, but you are able to customize the actual lollipop portion of it, which makes it stand out a little bit more especially if you're working with a theme uh, that like your company has a specific color theme and you want to add a little bit more flavor in terms of the color, you are able to come in here and change the data point, right? So I could change it to lime green. I could also change it from fill to just have it be a circle. It's kind of hard to see there, but let's see if we can get it. If we change the size to maybe 10 and then we change the fill, yeah, you can see that there is a hollow point there, or you can fill it in. So I did really like the color part of it. Also, uh, what I've done is I've actually set up a slicer here so that when you select a specific car, your color, and you can do this both on the bar uh, graph as well, you can highlight the specific car that you're looking for. And you can do that by either changing the bar color, or you can do that by changing the lollipop color. And let me demonstrate that one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change my data point to a custom measure that I created. And I'll do the same here with the car so that I can, I'll show you that you can do it with both. So I'm gonna, and it, it changed it here, but as I go in here and I select, let's just say I wanna look at the Dodge Challenger as I click on the Dodge Challenger, I'm gonna scroll down and try to find it here. And you can see that I've highlighted it in green and it's also highlighted on the bar graph. So that is a feature that you're able to do on both, right? As you, as you wanna focus down on a specific car, you can change the bar, which looks really nice, or you can also just change the specific uh, lollipop point. And so that applies to both of these. And so I, I really do enjoy that about the lollipop chart. Okay, one other comparison between these two uh, that I realized as I was testing this out is when you have a histogram here, for example, I still have miles per gallon, except for this time I've categorized miles per gallon into buckets, right? So if the car is within zero to 11 miles per gallon, it'll fall in this bucket. If it's 12 to 15 miles per gallon, it'll fall in this bucket, right? And so on. And so I've built both the lollipop chart and the histogram. And that's one area where I don't really know that I would use a lollipop chart when you're trying to visualize density, for example. Like if I have a histogram, I'm trying to see the distribution of cars across these buckets of miles per gallon. Uh, you do get a general shape of distribution with the lollipop chart, 
But this is a case where I want to see the bar graphs closer to each other. I want to see that density as opposed to when I want to see the spacing, right? So if you have categories that don't really rely on a particular order, then I think the lollipop chart is perfect for clarity. It provides really good spacing. But when I have categories that, in this particular case, these have to be in ascending order because I'm trying to see from the lowest miles per gallon to the highest how many cars there are and what type of curve, or maybe it's a bell curve, what type of shape am I looking at? Uh, that's where I think a bar chart does a better job at really being able to relay the shape and show the density of a graph as opposed to the lollipop uh, chart. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to call out with the lollipop chart, at least the limitation that I saw on this particular one by Nova Silva, is sometimes when I'm working with, with graphs like this, uh, I like to be able to visualize where the average line is, or really any particular line, in this particular case, the average line. So let me go ahead and build it real quick and I'll show you what I mean. So when I have my categories, sometimes it's nice for me to be able to see really quickly how many of these fall below the average line and how many are above the average line. That way I'm able to, to at a quick glance, see, oh, okay, about 30% of my cars are below the average line or about 50% are above or below, right? That is a limitation that I saw with the lollipop chart uh, is when I go to the analytics tab, I don't have that ability to add a trend line. Now, this is also a free version. I think there is a, a paid version of this graph that you can get. Yeah, there's right. There's like licensing. You can get like a premium version and maybe that one has the average line. Uh, I wish this one had it and it didn't. So what I actually did to showcase the same thing is I created uh, my own line here. So you can see it does the same thing. I'm really quickly able to see how many lollipops are right above the average line or right around the average line and then how many fall right below it. And I think this is a really cool feature of the graph. It is something that you get with the bar graph, and I wish it, it was included with the lollipop chart. If anyone is watching this from, from the lollipop developer group, if we can include this, or if it's on the premium feature, uh, definitely let me know. But I think this would be really, really cool to add. But that is one limitation that I wanted to call out. But if you're able to do that, I think this is a really, really cool visual. Okay, so the lollipop chart, have you ever used one? Did you like it? Do you intend to use one? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to know uh, if you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you like the content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me out. And I'll catch you guys next time.